Hey, this is Chris, and I'm walking up Portobello Road, the, the quieter part of Portobello Road today. And uh, I've got my Boston Red Sox hat on because the last video that I made was all about me arriving in Boston, in the Boston chapter. You know, sometimes, like I said, the whole point of all of these videos is to tell the story of how Belonging House kind of started. And basically, all the ingredients that have gone into the stew of the culture that we've been trying to form over the last 14 years. One of the things about listening to God and doing what he tells you is you can't go by the established plans. God's relational and the Lord's going to do things in your life that are unexpected. And it's all about having a relationship with Him, learning to listen to His voice. It's not about performance. You know, people use this language, obedience. They talk about obedience. And that's great if God's your taskmaster. But this isn't about obedience. This is about developing a relationship of trust and knowing that God loves you and <clears throat> God trusts you and you learn to trust God. So I landed in Boston in 2008, in the spring of 2008, and ended up in living with my friend Lynn in the woods of New Hampshire, about an hour north of Boston, about 44 miles north of Boston. And it was a very, very difficult transition for me. And I spent a lot of time out there at her house by myself. And for the first few months, I honestly, I, I wondered what on earth is going on in my life. So I found a ministry in Haverhill, Massachusetts called Somebody Cares New England. And although it wasn't a perfect fit for me, it seemed like the kind of place where I could at least do something for a season. And I went and I painted a mural in their building in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And it was an interesting thing. It was the first and last time I ever did anything with them. It's a good day. I painted a mural, did it all in one day. And at the end of the day, this guy comes in and he says to me, I'm a prophet and God's got a word for you. And I thought, oh great, you know, I'm not doing so well with words from God right now. So this guy says, God is going to use you like a paintbrush. And the first thing he's going to do is he's going to dip you in red paint. And for a season, God is going to paint with you using red. Then God is going to take you and he's going to dip you in green paint. And he's going to paint in green for a season. And then finally, God's going to dip you in gold paint. And he's going to paint in gold for a season. Because you're a paintbrush in the hand of God. And then after God is done with red and green and gold, you're going to look back and you're going to see the story of your life and everything is going to make sense. So, I left. I thought, boy, that's the craziest prophetic word I've ever heard and one of the craziest prophetic people I've met. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. And I left. Over the next few months, I took a bus into Boston. I started to meet people. I started to meet a man named uh, Jonathan Frizz, who was, a, uh, who was leading prayer in Boston and doing a thing called the 10 Days of Prayer. I met a pastor in Boston named Roberto Miranda, and Roberto uh, really took me under his wing for the next two, two, three years. We had a house of prayer in a storefront building that he owned, the church owned, and we, we operated for a couple years under this thing called the 333 House of Prayer. We were actually in an area that's now known as the Methadone Mile. And what we did was we, most of the time, we actually sat there in silence in the middle of the inner city of Boston while ambulances and gunshots and pimps and prostitutes hung around and drug, drug dealers. And we sat there in silence and prayed. And we did that for three years. 
some core people of my community, even to this day, came out of that season, including Nancy Mari, who has done most of my editing up to this point. But uh, in between trips to Boston on the bus, I was sitting up in New Hampshire. And one so in January uh, 2009, I was sitting in the chair in Lynn's living room in Amherst, New Hampshire, in the woods in the winter. On a fr it was a Friday morning, I remember, because I was getting ready to send the Friday email. I hadn't written it yet. Uh, I was sitting there. The wind's just kicked up. It's the Holy Spirit, always. And uh, I was sitting there in Lynn's living room and I saw a vision. I've mentioned this before in other videos. I encourage you to read my or watch my video on the seer anointing if you want to know more about visions and seeing. Uh, I saw a vision, a mental picture of millions of red envelopes flying through the air from all over the world and going into the White House. And there were so many red envelopes that they poured out of the windows of the White House. Well, uh, that week, of course, you know, so often I, in those days, I didn't know what to write in my Friday email. You know, God said to tell the story and there was no story. There was nothing happening. And so I, I said, well, I may as well write about this. So I wrote an email describing the vision and I said, wouldn't it be something if we sent red envelopes to the president? No, 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 definitely not. Well, at that, in, that, in those days, I had about, I, I think we had 60 people on my Friday email list. And there was no way to track readership then because I was using a free Gmail account. You know, I, was, I had started from nothing. Friday emails went out uh, from the library, the public library. So, I sent out my Friday email to 60 people and I said, hey, wouldn't it be great if we sent the president red envelopes? Well, I figured he'd get 50 if we were lucky. If every person who got my Friday email uh, sent them, you know, he'd get 60. Well, that was that. I sent the email. That was it. And then two weeks later, I get in a phone call. I get a phone call from someone who is a pro-life leader and they wanted to interview me on television, on cable, cable radio, serious radio, on a radio program called The Catholics Next Door. And I said, really, why do you want to talk to me? And they said, well, we want to talk about the red envelope movement. And I said, the red envelope movement, what's the red envelope movement? And he said, you don't know? And I said, no. And he said, millions of people are sending the president red envelopes. My email had gone viral. It had become a flash mob, really. A week after that, I received a phone call from Senator Sam Brownback. And he asked me, a senator from Kansas, who was involved in leading prayer and a Bible study on, the, on Capitol Hill in the U.S. Capitol at that point. And he said, who are you? Who is your organization? Everyone in Washington is talking about these red envelopes. And I learned an awful lot through this period. I learned that every time the government receives one letter, they assume that that one letter represents 15 voices, 15 people. So, um, I was just like, really? And so then, I, then, then this thing started to take over my life. I was doing uh, radio and television and uh, newspaper interviews almost every day for the next two months until March 31st, 2009. And in the end, the president received three and a half million empty red envelopes. Uh, and it, it kind of took over my life. It was a very crazy, stressful experience and not anything I planned. And when it was all over, the Lord said, you're not to do anything else with this. You're not to raise money from it. You're not to be involved in politics. You're just to let this go. Don't pursue it. Don't keep it going. This is over. 
So sometime around Easter of 2009, I'm sitting in that same chair where all this had happened two months earlier. And I was like, what was all that about? Then I remembered the crazy prophetic word. You're a paintbrush in the hand of God. The first color that God is going to paint with is red, and that's the red season. That was the red season. Three and a half million empty red envelopes. It's still affecting my life actually right to this day uh, because I got put on the domestic terrorist watch list. So all my travel around the world uh, sometimes gets tricky. So you never know what God's going to do. This is all about relationship. The Lord is always stretching us. He's always doing new things. So in the videos, the list here, I have another video on Boston that I made when I lived in Boston and that's going to talk about the healing the land prayer and really about the green season because the green season was about praying and healing the land. In our next video I'm going to talk a little bit about Salem, Massachusetts and our three years there and how that culminated.